What is going on you guys? My name is Stephen Farrell and I'm a visual artist, a podcast host, a mind coach and a motivational speaker and I'm based in Dublin in Ireland. For this project that I've been working on for the last while, I have been funded by the Irish Arts Council. So I want to say a big huge thank you to the Irish Arts Council for funding this project. I'm incredibly grateful for it and it was an incredibly fun project to do. Over the course of the project, and what, what it is basically is a project of how to step-by-step -step painting tutorials. And I'm going to go through the process of painting various different images, which I'm going to show you in a moment. The project is inspired by the animals of Irish mythology. Over the course of this series and in each episode, we're going to use pretty similar paints. The reason for that is I wanted to keep the material costs as low as possible. I didn't want to go out and start buying all artist quality, everything, and have you fray, uh, stretching your own canvas because that would have put you off more, most likely. I wanted th this to be as accessible, as easily accessible to as many people as possible. So everything I bought was as cheap as I could get it, unless I couldn't get it and then I used what I had. So we've got our three primary colors and I'm gonna put a link or I'm gonna put some information as to what you're gonna need. Three primary colors are red, our yellow and our blue. We've got black, we've got white. We also have burnt sienna, burnt umber and yellow ochre. But we're gonna cover that in a few moments. As I say, I'm gonna pop up the essential tools for this process and some paintbrushes as well. The most important thing and the, uh, the best part of this is it's about having fun and expressing yourself creatively. And that was really my goal with this. So again, before we move on, I'd like to say a huge thank you to the Arts Council of Ireland for supporting this. So a huge thank you to them. I'm incredibly grateful for that support. Enjoy this. Any comments that you want to leave in the comment box, please do. And if you want to get in touch with me, if you get these paintings done, I'd love to see them. I really would. So link them into my email. You can find my, my website details here, stephenfarrell.ie, or you can send them to my Instagram. All of that will be linked, I'm sure, in the notes of this. And yeah, let's get going and let's have fun. In this episode, we are going to paint the fox. Now the fox pops up quite a bit in, well, people's back gardens if you live in, in urban areas or if, even in the countryside, I'm sure, but it pops up quite a bit in mythology, certainly in Irish Celtic mythology. Now it's believed that the fox was brought to Ireland by the, the Norse and the Druids certainly revered the fox. So the fox, really cunning, really cute, very fast and really wonderful animals. So we're gonna paint the fox in this episode. The painting we're going to work on in this episode is the fox. Foxes are one of my favorite animals and I love dogs. So they're quite like dogs. And I, I love that they're, they're quite cunning and they're quite, they're really interesting. I love how they move, really love foxes. So we're gonna get going on this. And to start with, we're going to draw around this section, we're going to draw a circle. So like the other videos, if if you follow them, we're, we're really doing circles and straight lines, pretty much, some oval shapes as well. Really straightforward, really easy to follow. Now we're doing a circle here and it's almost at the center part of the canvas, not the dead center, but down lower, but central almost. And we're gonna try to keep it like that. Now what we can do, we can draw a kind of center line here, if we like to kind of give us a guide. And I'm just doing this really roughly because I'm not gonna measure it. I'm, I'm so used to doing this. When I draw dogs and stuff and paint dogs, this is, this is typically how I start off. Now I have a bit of paint coming off my hand onto the canvas, that's fine, it just does the way. So this is going to be marking where the, the, the fox's nose is. Now, as I say, I love foxes, a little line here. My dogs don't particularly love foxes. We have a lot of urban foxes around where I live in Dublin and they can be pretty loud at night. If you've ever heard a, a fox screaming, it can be pretty scary actually, uh, quite frightening. And my dogs do not like it at all. So little Mr. and Mrs. Fox aren't really welcome in our garden because the dogs don't love them, but I do. So let's continue on. We've got our circle here and that's gonna be the fox's nose. Now around here, 
is where I'm going to put in the eyes. Now for the eyes, I'm just going to do a circular, almost oval shape. Now we're going to do more work on the eyes. These are just the lines that we're making, the mark making process. We're going to be able to come into it and out of it. Why I'm drawing lines here is because this is just giving me a bit of, of shape. So we're going to be changing all of this around. This is just the start. Now, the fox has also a, a bit of a, let's go with an oval for, for this section here. So it's gonna be like it's muzzle. If you're familiar with dogs, you probably have dogs. If not, you might be familiar with foxes, but they have this kind of muzzle here, and this is where the front of their mouth will be. So we're gonna do that here, and that's gonna be an oval shape. We're gonna do another almost little half a, like a, a sideways C or a, a half a circle shape that's gonna be like the little chin. Now again, all of this, they're just mark making. We're gonna be going over it with paint, of course. Now what I want to do is almost draw a lines as if we're drawing a pyramid. Now we're not drawing a pyramid, we're just drawing two lines, but they would meet if we continued on we we would meet here actually you know what let's continue them on to show you so it would be almost like a pyramid there we go see so basic shapes we've got circles pyramids quite often we'll use squares now what i want to do is come up to about here and this is where the top of the fox's head is going to be how i'm going to know that is i'm going to look at proportion yeah that's kind of what i'm looking for now there are a few more lines that we're going to draw. So imagine this is, is the top of the, of the fox's head and we're going to have ears, of course. And we're gonna put the ear coming up and up. We're not gonna see the ear because the ear is quite large on a fox and it, it kind of will come off the canvas. The canvas is, you can have a bigger canvas at a later stage, but this canvas allows for some of the of the fox but not the ears so we're gonna have to go without the ears but that's fine now what i want here is to draw coming out of the pyramid about a third of the way up i guess we're going to do like a c shape here and we're going to curve out here as well so on both sides and this is going to be guiding me as to where the hairline is going to be now i'm going to come back down here to the nose and just give it a bit of a V here because the nose isn't a circle. Now again, we're gonna be doing all of this when we get into the actual body of the painting. But what I want to do as well is come up to the eye and just give it a little bit of a flick out there. And the same here, it's like a sideway S that we're doing. Now, so that's that and that. And as you can see, we're getting into the fox. Now under the chin, this part of it here, we're going to just flick that out as well. And we're gonna flick that out as well. So they're just lines, they're curvy lines, absolutely fine. I know you can all do your curvy lines. And then on the eye, we're gonna bring this down here and here. So there are a few shapes that we're working on. Now I'm gonna bring this in with a line, a curved line up here as well. Almost again, like a C or like a boat kind of shape. Up here, really nice and gentle really easy line and up here I'm going to so I'm going to put a, a line here and a line here because this is kind of where I want the top of the the fox's head to be and then this is going to be a part of the ear now the ears are much broader than this but I'm going to draw in a couple more lines here the reason for that is this is going to be kind of leading into the ear canal now here, I'm going to do another line up and up. Now I'm gonna look at that again for perspective and it's looking pretty good. It's pretty much what I'm looking for. All of this is gonna be covered over. Don't worry where you are. I'm just gonna do a line here and a line here. This is really just giving me guidance as to where I want color tone to go. Another one here and there we go. Okay, so this is pretty much the head of our fox. What I'm going to do now is just bring this line down, this line down, and then I'm going to start with the paint because we have lots of lines going on. It kind of looks like the fox now. I'll just finally bring down a few lines here and we're going to put loads of hair on it, loads of color, and we're going to start off by using a color that we haven't used. If you followed any of the other videos, we haven't used this color yet. 
and it's one of my favorite colors. It's actually my second favorite. My favorite color is burnt umber, and this is actually burnt sienna. Now, if you watch the horse video, I was using yellow ochre, and I was telling everyone it was sienna. It wasn't sienna. <laughs> I got my colors mixed up. I've been using these colors for 14 years or so, and I got them mixed up. But anyway, we are where we are. <laughs> we keep going with it. So what I'm going to do is get the Filbert number 10 brush that I have here that I, I mentioned at the start and I'm going to wet it. So dip it in my water. I'm going to dip it into the Sienna that I have here and I'm just going to draw in and paint in. But really it's like I'm, I'm drawing. I'm not, they're not broad brush strokes. I'm just going to go in and around the eye. So this is going to indicate to me where I want my, my, darker tones because as you might know with with foxes they have the most beautiful red tones and and red and and uh, kind of not yellowy kind of um straw like tones and and browns and and creams and really beautiful so i'm going to bring this in because this is where i want a lot of these colors to be now this filbert brush that i have is giving me lovely mark making it's drying up a little bit there which is exactly what i want and then we're going to come up here um, into the ear. So we're just going to mark in where we want our block colors to go. All of this is going to be painted over. This is very much blueprint colors. Blueprint colors like the blueprint of a house. You ain't never going to see those blueprints again. They are just to direct the foundation of what you're building. And that is what we're doing here. Now, as you can see, as I'm painting, the pencil marks are kind of being lifted. That's fine. At this stage, they're not going to they're not going to destroy the color at all because we're going to go over and over and over the color. So don't worry about that. I do also like sometimes when I see pencil marks on a painting. Now that is is where we're going with this. The reason I'm not coming in here really is because I'm this is going to be white, like almost like a a mustache. It's not, of course, the fox's mustache, but almost like it's mustache. Um, and that is going to remain white. So I'm not going to come into that with the, C, the, with the burnt sienna. Um, I'm just going to keep the burnt sienna up in the sections of the fox that I'm going to be using it for. So all up and around here. Now I am going to come in here with it because we are going to come down here. This is the fox's shoulders. So we are going to be coming down here with sienna and with some umber and, and with some ochre as well and probably some black. So we're going to be, or, or not necessarily black, but Mars black is the black that I got you to use, of course, because it has a nice warm tone. So yeah, let's get going on that. As I say, we're going to use some black, but I don't mean we're just going to be straight up black. We're going to mix it with some titanium white. We're going to bring it down to a gray. And what I want to do with that is just outline. Now that's a bit too, too dark for me. So I'm going to brighten it again, lighten it up with some um, yeah, not brighten it, we lighten it. We lighten with white, we don't brighten with white. We lighten it up here, there we go, okay. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. This tone is not going to be, it's not gonna be a gray beard. It is going to be, um, nothing wrong with gray beards, of course, but it is going to be a white, um, a white coat in this section, but I just wanna know where I'm putting it. So I'm gonna add some more titanium white, maybe a little dip of water just to, allow the pigment to flow nicely and there we go so this is just blocking this in exactly what i'm looking for and we're still using that filbert 10 so it is going down exactly the way i want it to go down i'm going to bring this color a little bit more titanium white into that gray mix i'm going to bring it up onto the foxes now i keep going to say horse <laughs> i'm so used to painting horses or dogs but onto the so if i say horse i do know it's not a horse of course the i'm going to bring it up onto the fox's muzzle so there we go now i'm going to look at it for perspective looking good to me and i want to come up here with this gray as well because this is the fox's ear and i just want to mark in where the ear is going Again, don't worry about these colors that we're putting down. Once we're kind of following it at kind of standard uh, color sections, it's, it's absolutely fine. I'm putting more titanium white into this mix again, of course, 
and I'm just gonna come down here. Now, the reason I'm using this filbert brush at number 10, I could very easily go with a bigger brush, but I don't want to. The filbert is giving me exactly the amount of coverage that I'm looking for. Not too much, not too little, like a Goldilocks type of coverage, just enough, just right. So it also allows me to move the hair or put movement into each brush stroke that will build up to, to look like it is the, the movement of the fox's hair. Now what I'm gonna do is just pop this away, wash my brush. If anyone's watched any of my other videos, I never wash my brushes or I dip them into water uh, and sometimes I forget it's, I dip them into not water, my coffee cup, but it's really important to wash your brushes because this is acrylic. As soon as acrylic dries and I'm in a pretty warm room, as soon as it dries, it dries and you ain't gonna get it out. While it's still wet, you can t get it off your brush and you wanna keep these brushes for as long as you can. Now I just have a straight up Mars black block here um, on my brush and the brush was a bit wet so it's gonna flow nicely exactly the way I want it to. There we go and I'm just gonna mark it in here. The reason for that is as I said earlier this was like a triangle that we did. It's the almost the canal of the ear of the fox. So there we go and you know foxes really curious really inquisitive and you quite often will see their ears sticking up because they're listening out for what's going on. There we go, brilliant. Okay, and there are some really amazing stories about foxes in Celtic mythology and Irish Celtic mythology. And the the goddess of the foxes, uh, Shiona, I think, Shiona maybe is her name. Anyway, I, I can't remember, but I think that's what it is. Okay, so as we're here, I'm going to grab some ochre, yellow ochre, and I'm gonna grab some titanium white and I'm gonna mix them together. There we go. So you can see that, that's the kind of tone I'm looking for, nothing too, too full on, because I just want to draw in here with an almost a dry brush where I want the movement here to be. So we're gonna bring it up, as you can see, just follow that kind of lead. We're bringing it up and out, amazing. Okay, this is exactly what I want. We're going to move the, we're going to change the flow of the strokes of the brush later on as well. They're not all going to flow like this. We're going to have different angles and stuff. And that kind of gives this 2D image some 3D kind of, um, a 3D feel to it because we want to make it look as real as possible. Now that I have that ochre, the yellow ochre here. I'm gonna grab some more of it and I'm gonna mix water with it and then grab a little bit of titanium white, bang that down there, lighten it up a little bit, and I'm gonna bring this up the bridge of the fox's, I swear I keep going to say horse, <laughs> the bridge of the fox's nose. There we go. We're going up here. Amazing. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Awesome. Now I'm going to bring it down here as well. It's not going to be the final color for down here, but it's just, I have a bit of an overloaded brush, so why not? And I'm going to bring it here as well. Now I could mark off the, or dry it off on a piece of cloth, but I'm not going to. I'm going to bring it out here because it is beneficial now. Certainly at this early stage, you kind of want to really know where you're going in terms of the brush strokes. And as you can see, this is giving me lovely kind of brush strokes that aren't block color and they're going over the other colors beneath and we're really getting a feel for this fox coming out. Now I have kind of made his ear a little bit too fat so what I'm going to do is just draw in the outside line of the fox's ear that I want and the same over here and I can fix up that don't worry about that. The beauty about acrylic is you can kind of go over it and over it and over it and it can cover up things really nicely. So I'm gonna do a background color in a few moments. Okay, that <laughs> that was my line, not there, Steve. Paint inside the line this time. Okay, so I'm gonna do a background color in a, in a couple of moments. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do it now because um, I just, actually, before I do, I'm just gonna get the last bit of this yellow ochre because I don't have a lot of it left. I'm gonna get the last bit of it. I'm just gonna bring it in here and fill in the nose, no harm. 
in giving it a bit of, of color. There we go. And it's almost like uh, little hills there, see? So that's what we want there. And let's bring it up and let's just block this in. There's no harm. There we are. It's actually the more the merrier in terms of tone. So let's see, yep, Foxy is looking good. Anyone have any names for it? You can you can link them in here if you like, what, what I should call the fox. Um, actually, there is an Irish legend about the fox and was it, it's connected to Fionn and the High King of Ireland as well. And the name of the person who the fox was tied into, it'll come to me, it'll come to me. It's Irish, so uh, a lot of my, People, a lot of my followers or people watching from outside of Ireland won't know the names, but was it Fiacra? Could have been. Could have been Fiacra. No, Fiacra doesn't sound like it's Fiacra. Anyway, we'll come back. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be thinking of that now while I'm painting. Okay. So what I want to do now is get this filbert brush dried off. Um, as much as I can. And what I want to do with the background is, if you watch any of my other videos, I've got a blue background on the horse. I've got a pink, pink background on the pinky background on the swan. And this one I want to be green. Now, because I wanted this whole project to be as reasonable as possible in terms of price, I didn't want it to be overly priced and in terms of your, your outgoings and the materials, because that can be prohibitive for people. And I didn't really want that. Well, I didn't want that at all because I remember when I was in college and I wasn't professionally painting, it, it was hard. I mean, the painting supplies, certainly with COVID-19, we're, we're at the period of time, they can be expensive. So I wanted to make it as, as re relatively inexpensive as possible. So we're gonna mix our colors and we've got a blue and we've got a yellow and I did put which blue, I think it's cobalt and, and uh, process yellow. I did link them in earlier, you have them. So it's just mix your blue and your yellow and we're gonna make a green, as you can see. I didn't want you to go out. You could have very easily gone out and bought a green, that's fine, but I didn't want you to. I just wanted to do this. Remember I said earlier about the ears being a bit too fat. I'm just gonna skinny them up by doing this. If they're a bit too thin, I can go back into it with the green later. This is really just a background color, I might, make it a lighter green, I might make it a darker green, it depends. But I'm actually enjoying that green, it's a nice color. So there we go, amazing. Woo, skinny ears. <laughs> Brilliant, okay. So I'm just gonna go around here, this as well. I may bring the hair out and I may cover over this, but it may not, so while we are blocking down the green, we might as well block down as much of it as we have, because wasting paint is a waste. And I have, oh, if you're using tubes of paint, put the tube lids back on, because I have wasted so many tubes of paint. And then you go to get them because you think you have a full tube and you try to squeeze out the paint and it ain't going anywhere because it's plastic. <laughs> it's a block. And it can be very frustrating and very expensive. So pop your lids back on your tubes. Okay, brilliant. Really happy with how this is going. We're 20 minutes in. If you need to pause me at any point, I am going to tell you at certain stages to pause me because it's going to be a, a part of the, the painting that, you know, you're not, you can kind of do while we pause. It's going to be the same thing like when I'm doing hair. But you can pause me at any point and come back to me if I'm going a bit too fast. I'm trying to go as slowly as I can. Now, I do take days and sometimes weeks to paint a painting. Now, this is just Mars Black with a, a brush that I linked in earlier, one of my favorite brushes, actually. I can go a bit too quickly sometimes because I just get caught in what is called the flow, that creative kind of flow that just comes upon you and I can just speedy Gonzales away with it. I am trying to, it, it's very unlike me to speak when I'm, I'm painting, to be honest, usually I'm singing or I've got a podcast, maybe a Stephen Farrell podcast. There we go. There's a plug. First plug of this whole thing. Um, usually I have something in and I'm not speaking. So I am finding it a little bit challenging to talk to you, but also tell you what I'm doing and explain it. Because I mean, a lot of people I'm sure who are doing this may not have painted before. So, or 
not the way I paint. And, and what I love about art and I love about creativity. Now what I'm doing, I'm just keeping a, a full on black, uh, Mars black. I'm not mixing it with anything. Maybe a little bit of water just to help it flow. But what I love about art and creativity is you can really find your own flow. Now with this eye that I'm doing here, I'm doing it almost an oval shape, not quite an oval shape. Now, you can see there, it kind of curves up. It's like, a, almost like a huge, not quite a human eye, but we all know what eyes look like. So, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna spin this around because the canvas is so handy, oh my God. I'm used to painting on really big canvases that I can't really spin around. Sometimes I do, but I have to move the whole easel. I have to move the whole painting upside down and it's a big rigmarole. It's so lovely. It's such a treat to just be able to flick it around the canvas or around my desk. Now those eyes aren't quite aligned for me and that would drive me actually bananas because I do like, I have a bit of OCD and things need to match up. No, okay. You can probably hear the rain outside. It's Dublin in the summer, so rain. Um, of course, but there we go. So that's maybe what you're, you're hearing in the background, if you can hear it. What I've just done there is grabbed a bit of titanium white and I'm just mixing it in there and I'm going to bring it in to this part of the fox here and here. And this is again, this is the fox's kind of muzzle area. And we're just going to bring that around and it's just adding a bit of not only shade, but it's also adding a bit of, ain't no shade here, but it is adding a bit of color as well because this is going to be a, a bit darker. It's not just that it's dark because of shade. Now I'm gonna bring some lines in here because we're going to bring whiskers out of these later. Now they're going to be covered over. We're gonna go over them with, with white, titanium white, but this is really what I want. And here I'm gonna go, up into this and down, almost like if you've ever painted, sw <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to follow all those uh, artists online and they'd get you to paint seagulls in the sky and they'd be like M shaped. Well, this is like an upside down seagull, but not as M shaped. Although we can make it a little bit more M shaped. Um, I can always take it down if, if I'm not happy with that later. So I'm gonna come in with that mix of, of gray, which is the Mars black and titanium white. I'm gonna go into the nose again. Lots of work to do on this nose, but this is really just giving me basically what I want. Yeah, exactly what I'm looking for. Brilliant. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Filbert brush and I'm going to get a bit of a wash of umber, burnt umber that is. So it's like, it's a wet brush. It's a pretty wet brush, it's probably too wet. So I'm gonna dab a bit of it off. Yeah, it would have been too wet. Dab a bit off on my cloth and I'm just going to go in and give a bit of definition around here. So this is almost where the eyebrows will be um, if the fox was not an animal, well, if the fox was not a fox, if the fox was a human, the fox is not a human. Um, but some of the stories from mythology and, and not only Irish Celtic mythology, but some of the stories from mythology around the world would say foxes are shapeshifters. And there we go. Okay, super. So we're just kind of giving more definition. I'm gonna bring more up around here as well. Now, the reason I'm doing it like this and I'm not following the, the flow of the hair is because it's more of a wash. So I will bring it up like that, but I do wanna give a block color as well. So I'm gonna do a little bit of it down here and here and bring that down here and here. Okay, so we want this to be kind of the warmer toned area and it will get lighter as it comes out. And I'm gonna come up here with this tone as well and up and into the ear. So that's where I want that. And the same over the other side. Um, now I just grabbed a bit of sienna there. I didn't mean to, but I'm going to just go with it because look, it's gonna be covered over a million times anyway. So there we go. When I was in art college, what I loved about my art tutor, one of the things, um, all of my tutors, I got on really well with them all, but one of the things I loved about my art tutor was he always told us to experiment. 
and try different things and like add salt to paints or add um, ink or add whatever you want, just try it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't work, you know it doesn't work. But at least you tried. It's like anything in life. If you haven't, now I'm not telling you you have to try everything, but there are certain things that we hold ourselves back from trying because we're afraid. But if we don't try, we don't know. Now I'm gonna bring this umber down onto the muzzle, the nose here, the bridge of the nose, and I'm going. To, I'm kind of giving it a curve because I I'm always thinking in my head this needs to look like it's three D or as close as possible, not a 2D painting. So I'm happy with that. What I'm gonna do is get all the color off this filbert brush. I love this number 10 filbert, and I love that other brush, this one. Um, and I, keep, I can't remember the name of it, but it is a flat head anyway. So what I'm going to do is pop back in here, grab some titanium white, a little bit of Mars black, and I'm going to do the chin of this little fox. Okay, I'm gonna hold it up and just make sure that it's all kind of even. It's fine, when we were doing the profile stuff on the other animals, it's, they only really had one eye on, on each of them. So it didn't really matter if they didn't line or if certain things didn't match up because you, you didn't know, you don't know, the, the viewer doesn't know. But for this, it's so dead on, you kind of need it to be as, as close to perfect as possible okay but what is perfect of course we we i hear you say uh, there's no such thing we're always getting better and better so the more you do this the more you'll do now what i'm doing now is i've just gotten some sienna and burnt sienna and i'm just like eyelashes um not quite eyelashes but movement and we're moving out this direction i'm going to do the same here but i'm going to curve it up a little bit okay brilliant and I'm gonna curve that up there as well. And this is exactly developing the way I want it to. I'm gonna make this a little bit curvy as well. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is just come down nice and gently onto the muzzle here and here and around here. Now, a lot of foxes like to eat chickens. They are animals after all, but I'm not painting this like it's blood. <laughs> this fox is not just eating a chicken. We're going to, I just want a nice warm tone around its mouth. And then we're going to come back into that in a while. Now I'm going to bring it down there as well. Incredible. Um, and here. Perfect. 